Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. Before I upload uh, my review, I wanted to go ahead and <laughs> record this for you as well. Last night I put up a community post, and I know a lot of people don't really see that. I don't really see it from my favorite YouTube channels out there anyway that I subscribe to and watch constantly. And I know that's not really the case with my channel, but for you folks who actually care and who want to be a part of this, you probably know I've been writing on some stuff for quite a while. And uh, on the community post I announced last night that after some tinkering, after kind of really messing around with e-publications and e-books and stuff on Amazon KDB process, I finally made an e-book for my first ever Pulp story. Now, Pulp, Goosebumps, of course, is influenced by Pulp. And uh, <laughs> this is more of straight up mature pulp. It has a little bit of language. It's very gothic, very atmospheric, I think. Um, and it's more plot driven than anything else. I have some good characters in here that I enjoyed quite a bit writing and I hope to do more in the future. Depending on the reception of this, I hope that, uh, you know, whoever checks it out will like it, you know. And what I basically wanted to make this video for, even though this truck is driving by to try to bother me while I try to advertise my, uh, my short story. Um, <laughs> anyway. Basically, I wanted to try out writing a pulp story because of Solomon Kane's stories, and I fell in love with it. And thank God for Razor Fist and his information, his recommendations as a writer. I love the stuff I learned about that guy from his different streams and whatever, so go check him out, by the way. Uh, but I went ahead and I wrote a full pulp story. It's not like a big old shadow magazine novelette type of thing. It's just a short story. It's about 30 pages, according to the post now from KDP, when I got my official page numbers this morning. And I think it was roughly 8,000 to 9,000 words, somewhere in there when I wrote the book, uh, or the story. I keep saying book, but it's technically a book, but technically not. Um, so I did that. It's about $1.50 if you want to happen to buy it. But again, you can only get it on Amazon, so you might have to have either a laptop or a desktop or whatever, and a Kindle. It's got to be one of the two, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> I guess it's the only way to read the thing. But, of course, you can't get this in print because nobody can get things like this in print. It's too short. Nobody really wants to publish stuff like that unless it's in a magazine that no one reads. That's kind of a bummer. But um, I wanted to do this in a, in a really cool way. And basically, in case you don't know what it's called, I'm going to put everything down in the description in case you want to check this out. I would really appreciate it. Before I tell you anything about this book, I would love everyone who wants to read this, who likes Pulp Fiction type stuff, not the movie Pulp Fiction, but Pulp Fiction types of things like The Shadow, like... Uh, the Phantom, like uh, Solomon Cain, as I said, Conan the Barbarian. If you like those kinds of things, like myself, and if you like Robert E. Howard type stuff, I hope that you'll check this out, and I hope it'll appeal to you. I'm not looking for, like, massive reviews, but I would love feedback, whether it be in the bottom of this comment section, if you happen to check it out, or if it's uh, on the reviews on the actual ebook. Whatever one you want to do, that's fine. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Um, I don't think anybody's picked it up as far as no. I don't know how often the Amazon stuff really updates. I only put out the one community post. I don't think many people saw it. It's not a big deal. I thought I'd make a video just to announce it, just to see if anybody's curious enough to try to give me some feedback on it, if you check it out. Again, if you're on Kindle Unlimited, it's free. You know, you can totally read it there for free for that subscription thing. But to purchase it, it's $1.50. Um, it's only the only one I'm probably going to make $1.50, just because of inflation purposes, you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't think it's anything super special, but I think it's interesting enough, and I think it's a decent concept for a story, and I think it's well executed in this concept, and I really think that people are going to, or hopefully, hopefully I hope, will like it. Um, I'm proud of it, what it is, but I would understand if nobody liked it. You know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? Have you ever written something like that or worked on a project that you just know no one's going to appreciate? That's kind of what I feel like with this, but I'm just hoping for some kind of feedback. Everybody wants positive feedback, but I want people to generally and genuinely let me know what kind of problems it has, what I should correct, what should I do with this or that. Um, and I want to thank the people who already responded. There's about five or six of you. Thank you for reaching out and saying, like, hey, I'm excited for you, Michael. I hope that uh, I can check it out soon. Anyway, the story itself is called The Beast of the Fields, and it is part of a series I'm calling A Two Fellas Story. Uh, really, a Two Fellas series, something like that. But the subtitle of the story is A Two Fellas Story Number One. Now, pulps, of course, you kind of just have episodic stories. Think of, like, The X-Files early on, or Supernatural in the first two seasons, or, you know, something like that. I really like that method of storytelling. I've never liked TV shows like that, aside from X-Files and Supernatural, when they did that. But I've never really been a fan of writing that kind of thing until recently. Again, reading Solomon Kane really got me into that. And I wanted to make my own little gothic universe with two characters that I really love. These two characters are named Mike and Trent Abbott. They're cousins. It's kind of like a supernatural type of hint and reference, you know, even though those guys are brothers. Um, 
These two are cousins. They drive this massive black truck around called the Black Beast. I love it. It's a great truck. I love describing it. I love writing about it. And basically they get calls, kind of like a Scooby-Doo type of thing, to go investigate certain things that are typically more on the leaning of a supernatural type of thing. So for example, in this particular story, they get a call from an old man named Chet who tells them <clears throat> that there is some kind of monster uh, that has been lurking around town. He apparently has a uh, pumpkin head looking type of thing going and it's pretty much hiding out in the woods. It's the fall time. I think it's the perfect time of the year to release this and promote it. And uh, even though the cover's not great, the original cover I designed on Canva was way better than <laughs> the one I had to put for KDP because the Canva one wouldn't format right because I don't have Canva Pro and I refuse to get it right now because I don't have the money and I don't really want to. It's almost at the end of the year, holidays and all that, you know. Uh, I had to make my own on KDP and those covers typically suck, so this one's not the greatest. But there's another catch to this. Um, there's, again, a, more of an atmospheric telling of this story. I like gore. When I read horror books from adults, or even from Goosebumps, I prefer gory stories. I've always been like that. I think I've made that very clear to a lot of you. Even though non-gory stories can scare me, I prefer a lot of gore-type stuff. This doesn't really have much gore, which kind of surprised me that it turned out that way. It's kind of gruesome with some of the craziness that happens out in these woods, and the chase on the monster type of situation. But overall, I think the stakes are pretty high. I think it's very fun. I think it's a very adventurous story involving woods and forestry. And, uh, for me personally, I love guns, <laughs> so the guns used here, pretty fun. Uh, this Trent character is based on my cousin named Trenton. My character is named Mike. It's kind of a self-insert, but I don't really care. When it's done right with a property that's not like Spider-Man or something, it works. Um, <laughs> that's my personal opinion on it. But I have my weaknesses in my writing just like anybody else does. It's like with Stephen King and Plot. He's more of a character guy. He drives the stories by characters more than actual plot. I try to focus more on plot and uh, dialogue more than anything. <clears throat> but I'm a big fan of monsters, and that's one of my biggest focuses for all the future story ideas I have for these pulps. And they'll probably all be about this page length, about 30 pages or so. Hopefully I can get them to grow a little bit more, but I'm not going to force that. I'm going to put it out as it is and enjoy it. And maybe collect some at certain points, I don't really know yet. Kind of depends on how this story does. But I thought this would be the place to really advertise this, in case you guys are curious about it, in case you want to let me know what you think about it. Um, I'm not asking for like video responses and stuff. If you want that, if you want to do that, let me know about it. I'd love to check that out. But uh, even if it's negative, again, I'm not against negativity. Please let me know everything. Now, again, I'm not sure if anybody bought it yet or checked it out or anything. I'm not trying to sound like I'm begging or anything. But if you do, please don't just read it and drop it. Be mean, <laughs> okay? Let me know everything. I'd love to hear all that down below. I hope this is fun. I hope you enjoy it. I'm very excited about it, and I hope it's going to be something you guys will enjoy as much as I have. And it'd be cool if it caught on, and we could do something cool with these storylines uh, in a more episodic nature, because you don't really see that anymore. Anyway, The Beast of the Fields, a two, <laughs> it's hard to say that whole title. The Beast of the Fields, a two fellas story, number one, is officially released as of this morning. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's a cool fall story, and I hope you like it. Um, let me know down in the comments section down below what you guys think. And uh, if I get some really good reception, I will announce I'm going to be working on more stories. I do have plenty of story ideas, at least 10 more stories right off the top of my head that I've been thinking about and brewing around in my brain for the last couple of months. But uh, I'm excited about it, and I hope that people will enjoy it if they do check it out. Uh, don't expect perfection, and don't expect scary. Don't expect that. Expect atmosphere, expect a monster story, expect a hunting story, expect that kind of thing. Don't expect a scary story. I don't really think it is. Um, that's my personal opinion. I don't really get scared by books very often, but when I do, it's usually because of gore, not like atmosphere. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, being someone that uh, cares a lot of the time. A lot of you guys gave me some great, great comments and uh, just in celebration with me, and I'm really thankful for that. I just want to thank you all once again for being a part of this. And again, it's $1.50 to buy it. It's on Kindle Unlimited if you happen to be a, a subscriber to that of some sort. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you all, and goodbye.